Khufu was the uh, pharaoh who was credited for building the Great Pyramids. And um, I w just before you got on here, I was discussing how there, there, even today, there's a lot of controversy when it comes to that subject. Um, a lot of uh, people during even the ancient days, during uh, the times of ancient Greece and stuff, they just, he, he had a bad uh, reputation put upon him because of the fact that he was given credit for building these pyramids, you know, and uh, they uh, made it out to where he uh, had like a labor force of slaves that were constantly building it and stuff like that, and that he was so e egotistical that he would build all these great uh, structures and the reason why the Greeks did that to him was to uh, look down on him and make him less than because they themselves were intimidated by these pyramids okay uh, Greece had never built anything that magnificent in in their entire existence and then when they finally come to Egypt they see these pyramids that even to this day are some of the, I believe they're freaking some of the freaking most uh, amazing structures that have ever been built in history um, I've uh, done research on that and they said that today with the technology we've got we still could not do a work project that big at, on that scale you know what I mean? Now, that's amazing. Like, yeah, especially when you add the fact that we have so much advancement in technology. Wow, I had no clue. They, but uh, it's an intricate process. I watched the documentary <laughs> on that type of stuff, too. And just what I don't know how accurate it was because it was like, uh, like where, where they they redo it. And they so they were like kind of attempting to like redo the process in order to show the process. Of course, there were no videos of anyone building the pyramids back there, back then. So like, yeah, I apologize, go ahead. I was just, I'm just intrigued. It's, fine. it's perfectly fine. Um, that And that's basically kind of alludes into what I'm talking about too. Like, like um, they're, they're trying to figure out how the Egyptians did this because, um, well, the, the thing is, is um, a lot of people, aren't aware of this but like uh the egyptians didn't have wills not not during that time period i mean they 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 had uh, the chariots but that, but during the time period with the pyramids there was no wills that were strong you know that were able to do that so there was uh them factors and there's also evidence in uh well there, there's also other examples of that, you know, that, that goes on like here in, in America, which Mark uh, alluded to is the whole north and south continent of America, you know what I mean? Here in America, they, they didn't have wheels, period. I mean, the first time they've seen, they saw wheels was when freaking the Spaniards landed on, on shore, you know? So... And, and they, they didn't have uh, strong metals. I mean, they had uh, obsidian, but that, that was a rare commodity form. The majority of metals they had was like copper, you know, and stuff like that. Or, and they had weak metals basically to mine. But then they created these structures, you know. And, and then to think about what it's made out of, for it to be so withstanding is just so amazing. Because, I mean, like, it's like mud. I don't want to say just like mud and dirt. But, I mean, ultimately, that's kind of what it boils down to. Compacted, heavy blocks of dirt. And that's just crazy. Because you're saying that even with current technology, we would not be able to build something so monumental. And yet it seems so simplistic in all its grandiosity. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh... Now the the dirt aspect, what I uh, what, what catches my mind is uh, the Sumerians, and I talked to you about that too the other day. Like all of their structures were built out of mud, you know what I mean? And they created just awesome structures too. It wasn't 
to the extreme as what the Great Pyramid was, you know what I mean? But they were still uh, the ziggurats. They they created all that out of mud, you know. And uh, I had no clue, and that's crazy. That that was created out of dirt and mud because they didn't have the materials like the rest of the world, and in Egypt too. I mean, not just building the structures, but bringing in the the stone and bringing in all of these materials. They had to bring them in, and. Uh, where I was going with this originally was, you know, Khufu. They, they uh, cast a really bad light on them, but the truth of the matter is, is nobody really knows much about Khufu whatsoever. I mean, and they, they say that he was the one that created the pyramids, but there's no evidence of that either, you know? The only thing that they found was they found his name written on a stone and it was automatically uh, branded that he was the one that built the pyramids. Um, they have a plaque up that was written saying that he he re, uh, renovated the work on the pyramids, and that they took with his name on a stone, and uh, and and kind of. Uh, branded it as being his creation and there's absolutely no proof that that was, that was even fact you know um, it's like uh, yeah, tell Mr. Robot just to click on the link <laughs> but he uh, okay I'll tell him uh, Khufu actually had no uh, there you go. hey you there, Mr. Robot? I heard something. I think hey, he's... Guys. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. I can as well. Is it too loud or is it okay? Oh, it's okay. Yeah, it sounds good. Yeah. Just make sure your uh, speakers sure are kind of a distance away from the mic. So. Yeah, because it's a bit of an echo. Uh, okay, uh, I'll turn it down. I had a issue. With I don't have headphones at the moment. It's my problem. Do you have any headphones or anything? Oh, you just. But if that. not, maybe and two, maybe helping just so that way when he talks, there's not an echo. Oh. If you mute until you until you're saying something, just because like that helps me. Like yesterday oh. was helping me with that as well. Well, to be fair, I want. Mr. Robot to talk. He, he has a lot of good information. As much as possible. I know. He's so... Oh, my gosh. He's so, so freaking I mean, smart. Anything, it's anything, crazy. I'll, I'll mute my shit. Class is in session. Let's <laughs> sit down and shut up. Right. Yeah, he's so smart. But anyway, I'm listening. You know, I'm going to go back to mute and full attention. Now, uh, we, we were talking about Khufu with the Great Pyramids. And uh, kind of catch you up on what we're talking about. I don't know if you've been here in the stream or not, but it was uh, how he was, uh, first of all, how he was branded a bad guy by the Greeks, you know what I mean? And if you read all of the old Greek writings, you'll, you'll see how they, they branded him as a villain and everything like that, when in reality they were just intimidated because when they came to Egypt, they seen these huge monuments that they themselves could never build and they became jealous, you know what I mean? And uh, after that, like, it was like a theme where as time went by, he was vilified and there's absolutely no evidence that he was actually a bad guy, a good guy or anything, you know? And uh, I, I was covering that, and then I went into the the pyramids themselves, okay, and uh, how everybody kind of uh, kind of basically just pinned it on him that he was the one that built those pyramids when there's really no evidence showing that he built those pyramids. Yeah, the evidence is very flimsy. It's just one piece of graffiti, like right up the top, right? Yeah. I mean, that that was all they had. And then I think they had a plaque where he was, uh, like, uh, 
talking about how he did all these great renovations on it, you know, and that, that was all that was found. But <laughs> that was basically where we were at. And uh, I was talking about, like, Khufu and his, uh, the way he was branded by the Greeks and all through history where, like, at one time, you know, people honestly believed that Egypt had like a whole freaking workforce of work slaves that came together on a day-to-day -day basis to build these pyramids and I mean that that's not the facts you know what I mean there's no evidence at all whatsoever that Egypt had slaves I mean these people hey. were actually people. Paid. oh go ahead oh go okay. ahead well yeah I agree and um it's actually also like physically impossible that they built that pyramid in one human lifetime just because of the sheer amount of stone that had to be quarried and moved uh, from like Aswan or wherever it came from, quite a long distance away. And uh, we still don't know how they moved those stones um, over sand. And uh, according to the new research that's come out by Robert Schock on the Giza Plateau, looking at the weathering patterns on the Sphinx and stuff like that, they placed it at a, a lot earlier date than what is now claimed by Egyptologists. And um, because the casing stones were removed from the Great Pyramid, we're only seeing what's like underneath. So we can't see the actual weathering patterns on the, on the pyramid and to date it. Um, and I think, that, I think that was done by the, um, was that done by the uh, Arabs later on? Or whatever um and they built like other temples out of it in the city of cairo yeah um yeah. but yeah so like according like i like looking like very broadly when i look at this stuff i like like i read a little bit of greek historians and stuff that came over there and they they talk about a much earlier date as well and um like for example the atlantis story if you've ever read plato's account on that yeah. Um, he talks about like early Egypt being like way, way back in the ancient times, like 10,000 10, BC type thing. And um, he, you know, uh, when I looked at, uh, you know, Edgar Casey did some readings back on on this like way back in the day, in, like early 1900s, and he also placed it at 10,000 BC. And uh, recently, I've looked at remote viewing data from um, Farsight, farsight.org. They did a remote viewing session on the pyramids and the type of technology that they described um, moving those stones is stuff that we don't know about today. So I, I kind of, I'm more kind of leaning towards a lost civilization type thing or like some kind of extraterrestrial involvement because, you know, all their mythology basically talks about what we would call aliens today. Like uh, the god Osiris came from the star system Sirius and stuff like this. And like the types of technology that they describe is just like way beyond what should have been in that time period. And even what we have now, you know, types of energy technology that we just don't know about. So, um, yeah, in the remote viewing data, they showed like they could actually levitate these stones, which is kind of reminiscent of some of the things we've heard from the East. Eastern mythologies of like monks levitating stones and stuff like that. And even just uh, recently, last couple of weeks, last, last month or so, that um, Stephen Greer uh, orchestrated um, a whistleblowing conference that came out. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you guys saw it, but like one of the whistleblowers talked about technology that the military has in Area 51. Uh, where they could levitate huge blocks of stone uh, just above the, like, without without any moving parts, basically, just through some kind of resonance thing. Uh, and I found that interesting because it reminds me of the story of um, Ed Leeds Scarlin.